Hi, and welcome to the next uh, edition of Distilled Demographics. Um, this time, we're going to look at one of the demographers more used and maybe more popular uh, subjects, uh, particularly by the media, and that is population projections. Of course, demography spends a lot of time in measuring birth and death rates and counting population and all of that. But the really big question is, beyond what population is today, what will world and country's population be tomorrow? Uh, and we know that they're going to be different. So we're going to talk about population projections. And everybody likes the results of population projections. So we often get questions here at PRB such as, what will world population look like in 2050? So here we show the results. Aha, don't go behind that door just yet. Well, we know you all want to know the answer, but there's something we have to do first before we look at the results. So let's, by way of example, say that the position's reversed, that I have asked an expert in the country of Uganda what that country's population is going to be in the year 2050. In fact, I have his response right here. He said that Uganda is now 34 million people, uh, and in 2050, it'll be 150 million. Okay. 17 years, I'm just reading this, 17 years after that, Uganda will be 300 million, and 17 years after that, 600 million. So that's up from 34 today. But we asked the expert, and that's our answer, so we're satisfied, aren't we? Not so fast. Perhaps we should call that demographer back up, that expert, and find out just how those future numbers came about for Uganda. 34 million today and 300 million in 2067? Those are some pretty big numbers. So we call him up and he says, oh, well, he says, you know, I mean, women in Uganda today average about six and a half children or so each. Uh, based on the last survey, and, you know, the birth rate's not coming down, and, well, their life expectancy's going up a little, and, you know, so there it is. So that's what I assumed, that the birth rate of Uganda, in fact, would stay just the same as it is today, he tells us, about six and a half children per woman. Does that seem reasonable? The expert, it turns out, was quoting directly from the United Nations Population Division's uh, most recent projections, and one of those uh, variants, as they call it, or series, uh, is illustrative, and it shows what a country's population would be if the birth rate remained the same as it is today, all the way out to 2050. So let's take a look at, uh, at a graph that shows the main UN population projections. But the first thing we're going to look at, too, is assumptions. Okay, the United Nations has uh, three what they usually call main variants, the high, the medium, and the low. And, you know, the constant fertility one is, is also kind of a main variant, uh, but it's mainly for illustrative purposes. Because in many ways, we probably don't expect that the fertility rate in high fertility countries, at least, will remain where it is today. But let's take a look at these different assumptions. Now remember, we start out with Uganda at 6.5 children per woman today, roughly. The constant fertility variant of the United Nations naturally assumes in 2050 that it would be 6.5 children. And there goes our line up to about 150 million people, uh, about a five-fold increase in the country's population. Then we have the high, medium, and low variants, and these are the ones that we look at most often, especially for the world. Uh, the high variant assumes that women in Uganda would average three children per woman. If that happened, then the population wouldn't be 150 million, but it would be around 100 million. Uh, what if they were half a child less, at about 2.5 children per woman? Uh, then the population of Uganda would be 90. And last, if it fell down as low as 2.1, then 
then the population of the country would be 80. So there we have a whole bunch of possibilities. Now let's take out that constant variant for a moment. There, it's gone. There's the three that most people look at. But, you know, that's not exactly true. Because when you have a, an odd number of projections, which is pretty normal, high, medium, and low, what do we do with the high and the low? Ah, throw it away. So we only look at that one, the medium projection. Because, you know, when someone calls in on the phone, they, they don't want three projections. <laughs> they just want one, especially if they're writing an article of some kind. But we can see here very clearly, since we've looked at the assumptions first, right, that relatively small changes in the, the assumption or the actual fertility that we see can make a fairly large difference in a country's population size. And that's much of the purpose of this particular episode. So, now we saw an example of Uganda. Uh, but, you know, trying to project a country's birth rate out to 2050, you know, about 40 years from now, particularly when it's high, and it may not have been coming down very fast, that's pretty tricky. Uh, so what can we possibly do to make some judgments about that? Um, we can't really know what's going to happen, but we can try to draw some inference, some ideas. For example, uh, women in Uganda today, about one-fourth are using some form of contraception. Uh, about one in five, most of those women, are using a modern method, as we call it, such as the pill or a condom, something like that. Uh, that's a pretty high contraceptive prevalence rate for an average number of children of 6.5. So that's a piece of information and we kind of set that aside. Uh, then we might look, look at factors such as the policy of the country. Is the, is the country actively trying to uh, lower the birth rate to slow population growth? Uh, if they're trying, are they being successful? Do they have the funding to do it? Uh, education. We often look at education. A little more than half of women in Uganda have now finished primary school. Uh, that's not bad, uh, and it has been increasing. These still don't mean that we can predict what's going to happen in, in a particular country, but they help put some kind of a some kind of a handle on the future. So now moving from the from the countries, we'll take a look finally at world population projections. Now. Um, you probably already heard, and it's, it's getting a lot of publicity, that in 2011, this year, that uh, we pretty much expect to reach the 7 billion mark. Uh, only, in fact, 12 years after reaching 6. And I, that, that's probably going to be in the uh, newspapers more and more. So here is a, a picture of what world population growth is going to look like between now and 2050. Did you notice something missing? If you have sharp eyes and it was up long enough, uh, you'll notice on the left there weren't any numbers. And I'm trying to make a point there. That that's the overall picture of what world population is likely to look like. At the top in the darker area, we have the developing countries, Africa, Asia, and Latin America. And down, squeezed down at the bottom, we have the developed countries of Europe, North America, etc. Uh, but that's the picture we're going to have. The, Population growth is going to be in the developing countries. Uh, if we look back just for a second at Uganda, it had a population below the age of 15, below the age of 15, of close to 50 percent. Uh, so since so many developing countries have much larger proportions of their population below the age of 15, who will be the parents of tomorrow, uh, then we can say for sure that this picture is right. Now let's just say that I get a question on, uh, on world population growth in the telephone and someone calls up and says, what will population look like in 2050? I said, oh, that's, I got the answer on that. That's no problem. Uh, it'll be 8, 9, 10, or 11 billion. I think I'd have a pretty dissatisfied caller who would say, wait a minute, that's only 40 years away, and you can't even tell me within that range. Well, you know, really the range isn't quite that large, I think, of certainty. Uh, because when we do the world, it's a sum of over 200 countries. And down below that world level, all kinds of things have ha are happening. 
uh, countries have had very different population pasts and they're going to have different population futures. But still, in a sense, it may be a big thing to say, but it's, they're kind of going to compensate uh, for one another. Uh, some people have said that projecting global population in 2050 is like predicting the weather in 2050. Uh, I, and I'm, I think I can make the point or the argument that it's not quite the case at all. That um, we do have a fairly good handle on where things will be in 2050, but again, at the world level. At the country level, almost anything can happen. Well, so now we've all learned something. But hold on. The next time we call up someone to ask them about the population future of a country, what are we going to say? We'll say, hey, expert, what are you assuming about the birth rate in Thailand for the next 50 years? Boy, will he be surprised.